suspension system troubles usually show up as abnormal noises, tire wear, steering wheel pull, or front end shimmy. You must make sure that the trouble is in the suspension system and not in the steering, wheel bearings, tires, or other related parts. Check for abnormal tire wear. Edge wear, for example, might mean a worn ball joint or bad control arm bushing. Do a shock bounce test. If the car keeps bouncing when released, the shocks are bad. Scanners can quickly locate trouble codes in today's electronically controlled suspension systems. To verify, play in the suspension system. Place the weight of the car on jack stands properly. When the spring is on the upper control arm, lift under the frame. With the spring on the strut, you must also place your stand under the frame. This will allow you to detect any play in the ball joint or control arm bushings. However, with the spring on the lower control arm of a modified strut, you must place your jack stand under the control arm. This will free up the ball joint so you can detect excessive wear. When the spring is on the lower control arm, again, place your stands under the control arm to release spring pressure from the ball joints and control arm. With the car resting on jack stands, use a long bar to pry up and down on the tires. When lifting up and down, note any excess wear or play in the suspension system, especially the ball joints and control arm bushings. If someone is available, ask them to use the pry bar while you lie on a creeper to inspect for part play. Raise the car on a hoist to complete your inspection. Some ball joints have a wear indicator. The indicator is a small flange around the grease fitting. The flange moves up into the joint with wear. If the flange is recessed into the joint, it is badly worn and should be replaced. Worn ball joints will also show up by making a clunking or popping sound when turning corners or going over bumps or holes in the road. Also check for ruptured boots on the ball joints, which lead to rapid wear. Press on them to see if you see any signs of grease leakage. Remember, worn ball joints can be hazardous. They can lead to joint separation and loss of vehicle control and possibly an auto accident. Inspect other components like the bushings on this sway bar. If they are badly smashed, cracked, or damaged by oil, they should be replaced. Worn sway bar bushings will make the car more unstable in turns. Don't forget to check the condition of the sway bar and its bushings. Also, check control arm bushings. Worn control arm bushings are very common and may lead to unwanted play in the suspension system. Check both the front and the rear control arm bushings for wear. Shock absorber replacement is the most common suspension system service operation. After prolonged use, the components in the shocks can wear and no longer provide adequate damping action. A leaking end seal, for example, can cause a loss of fluid from the shock. Worn piston seals and leaking valves can also reduce damping action. Bad shock absorbers reduce stability on rough road surfaces and they should be replaced. If the shocks failed your bounce test, described earlier, or if you detect leakage or wetness, the shock should be replaced. Also, inspect the shocks for looseness and deteriorated bushings, which could cause rattling noises on bumps. These problems would also require shock replacement. To install new shocks, first, unbolt the fasteners on one end of the shock. Slide off the washers and bushings. Unbolt the bottom of the shock. Then slide out the old unit and install the new shocks in reverse order of removal. Complete control arm service generally involves ball joint and bushing replacement. To remove a worn ball joint, you must either remove the bolts or cut off the rivets securing the joint to the control arm. Here we are using an air hammer 
to quickly sever off the heads of the rivets. Make sure you're wearing a face shield to protect your eyes and face. To keep the spring from smashing the control arm down with deadly force, place some of the car's weight on the lower control arm. Then you can pull out the ball joint cotter pin. Use an impact to spin off the castle nut holding the steering knuckle onto the ball joint. Again, you must have a jack stand under the control arm to keep the control arm from flying down with deadly force. A suspension system spring, when released accidentally, can cut off fingers, hands, or even kill if it strikes someone in the head. To separate the ball joint stud from the steering knuckle, use a forked tool and an air hammer. Drive the fork between the knuckle and joint to pull the tapered stud out of the knuckle. This will allow the knuckle to fall free of the upper control arm. A fork tool, when driven between parts, produces a powerful wedging action that will separate parts without damage. A fork tool is used on suspension system or steering system parts that use a tapered stud and the resulting forced fit. Once you have separated the ball joint, it can be replaced while still on the vehicle or by moving the control arm to work at a bench. Two large nuts often secure the control arm to the vehicle. They can often be accessed in the engine compartment. Here we are using a special swivel ratchet to remove the nuts. Before sliding the control arm inward and off the car, note the location of the alignment shims. The shims on the front and rear of the control arm should be replaced in their original locations to simplify wheel alignment after your service operations are done. Lift the control arm off of the vehicle and take it to your workbench. Clamp the control arm in a vise, then use your air chisel to finish removal of your old ball joint. If needed, use a hammer to drive the rivet fragments out of the control arm. If a ball joint is bolted in place or screwed in, modify your procedures as necessary. Compare the new ball joint with the old one to make sure you have the correct replacement unit. The mounting flange, stud diameter, and stud length must all be the same for the new ball joint to install properly onto the vehicle. Most replacement ball joints bolt into place on the control arm using high tensile strength bolts. When installing the new boot, note any breather opening in the boot. The opening should face inward or away from the tire to help keep moisture and water from entering the hole. After orienting parts, fit the boot and boot flange into place. Install the nuts onto the bolts, then tighten the fasteners to specs using a torque wrench. Hand start and then tighten down the grease fitting for the ball joint. Removing old control arm bushings can be a challenge. Begin by using an impact gun and socket to unscrew the nuts over both ends of the control arm shaft. Then use your air hammer to drive out the old bushings. You might want to use a torch to heat the control arm and ease removal. Be careful not to be cut on any jagged metal. After mounting the control arm in a vise so that the control arm is supported, use a driving tool and hammer to force the new control arm bushing down into place in its hole in the control arm. Be careful not to strike your hand because heavy blows are needed to force the control arm bushing down. Once in place, install your flat washers and nuts. Only snug the nuts down, do not tighten them. It is best to tighten the nuts after installing the control arm and placing the weight of the vehicle on the arm. The service of a lower control arm is similar to the upper arm just demonstrated. Install the control arm in reverse order of removal. Fit the arm over the studs on the frame. Install any alignment shims and tighten the nut securing the arm to the frame. Fit the ball joint through the knuckle. 
you might need to use a set of large pliers to force the stud down through the knuckle so that you can start the nut. Tighten the nut to specs using a torque wrench. Strut service is often needed because of strut shock failure. Leakage will show up around the top of the shock under the boot. The car may also fail a bounce test. Another reason for strut service is a binding upper strut bearing. Turn the front wheels while watching for spring binding or roughness. This will detect a bad strut bearing. The upper strut bushing can also fail and will show up as looseness or play when you bounce the car. A bad upper bushing can cause a rattling noise on rough road surfaces. To service a strut assembly, first disconnect any brake line brackets or other hardware that would prevent strut removal. Then use an impact to remove the large bolts and nuts that secure the bottom of the strut to the knuckle. Scribe alignment marks on the strut if it's going to be reused. Slide the bolts out and separate the knuckle from the strut assembly. Lower the car close to the ground so that you can remove the fasteners holding the upper end of the strut. Spin them off with an impact gun. Remember not to spin off the large center nut because it secures the compressed and loaded coil spring. Make sure you only remove the small outer nuts or bolts holding the strut assembly. Slowly guide and lower the strut assembly out of the vehicle, then take it to your workbench for service. Once out of the car, you can also check the upper bearing for binding and problems. Install a strut type spring compressor on the coil spring. Then use an impact to run it down and compress the spring. Make sure the spring is compressed enough that it is free to wiggle inside the strut assembly. Then you know it's safe to use the impact to remove the large center nut and lift off the coil spring. Some struts use a removable strut cartridge. You can simply install a cartridge in the strut housing. Other strut designs require you to replace the whole unit because the strut and housing are manufactured and purchased as a single assembly. When reassembling the strut, check the condition of the rubber spring pads. Replace them if needed. Make sure they are placed on the strut facing correctly. Inspect the upper strut bushing and replace it if you find signs of damage or wear. Also replace the bellows if it is torn or deteriorated. Fit the spring and compressor back into place in the strut. Turn the spring so that it fits properly into its rubber cushions or pads. It is critical that the ends of the coil springs are oriented correctly. The spring ends must fit into the small pockets formed into the pads. Don't forget to replace the strut bearing if it was binding or dragging. Fit the bearing and cushion assembly over the strut shock. Then start the large nut by hand to prevent cross threading. Using a torque wrench, tighten the nut to specifications. Release the spring compressor and then reinstall the strut assembly on the car. It is best to ask someone for help because it can be difficult to hold the strut in place while you also start the nuts at the top of the unit. One person can hold the strut while the other person starts the nuts. Fit the large lower bolts through the strut and knuckle. Take time to torque all fasteners properly and then perform a wheel alignment after your service operations are done. After prolonged service, springs can fatigue and lower the ride height of the car. Look up the chassis height values and measurement locations in a spec book. Before measuring chassis height, however, check tire pressure and tire size, which could affect your measurement. Then measure from the level ground up to the specified point on the car body or frame. 
If your measurements are smaller than specs, the springs have probably weakened and need replacement. If non-factory size tires are installed, remember to allow for their diameter difference. An inspection of the springs might also find broken coils. If you can see where the jounce bumpers have been hitting the frame, it might also indicate weakened springs, letting the suspension system bottom out on the frame. Inspect both the front and the rear coils. To replace rear coils on a solid type axle, you can usually use jack stands and a floor jack to release the axle from the frame, releasing tension on the springs so that the springs can be easily removed without danger. With the many suspension system designs available, you will have to modify your procedures as needed. With a long and short control arm suspension, you will often have to remove the shock absorber and disengage the ball joint to replace the coil springs. By dropping the lower control arm, you can remove the spring. A coil spring compressor is often needed to compress the spring to ease installation and removal. A spring compressor will squeeze the coils together, making the spring shorter in length so that it can be easily removed or installed in the suspension arm. When compressing a coil spring, remember that you are building thousands of pounds of force. If the spring were to break the tool or become disengaged from the tool, the spring could fly out as if shot from a cannon. After re-engaging the ball joint or fitting the spring inside the control arms, unscrew and remove the spring compressor from the car. As a reminder, always check wheel alignment after performing major suspension system repairs.